Well, good morning and welcome to Grace Bible Church. Each week we take the Lord's Supper together and each week an elder or leader in the church opens God's word to help prepare our hearts and minds for this remembrance. We want you to have a copy, your own copy of God's word in front of you in your hand as we read. So if you don't have a Bible, please raise your hand and we will give you one. And if you don't own a Bible, please take this as our gift to you. Just raise your hand and the men will put a Bible in your hand. So Jesus instructed us to take bread and juice together, symbols reminding us of him, his life and death, his body and blood in remembrance of him. If you're a Christian, regardless of if this is your church, regardless of if you've had a good week, a bad, no matter what, if you are a Christian, if you are saved by grace, this time is for you. Take the bread and juice when it comes. But if not, if you recognize that you're not a believer, please let the bread and juice pass when it does come. Regardless, this time is an excellent time to examine yourself. Like 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says, examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. But we're going to use 1 John to help us in our self-examination this morning. So open your Bibles to 1 John chapter 1. And as we read, I want you to actively read along and look for the two categories of people described. One is a group that's not saved. They're lying to themselves and or others about their relationship to the Lord. And then there's a second group, those who truly know the Lord, having been forgiven and cleansed from their sin. And as we read, actively look for the criteria given so that you can know how to discern which category you're in. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, read with me. This is the message we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for those of the whole world. By this, we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. The one who says, I've come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him the love of God has truly been perfected. By this we know that we are in him. The one who says he abides in him ought himself to walk in the same manner as which, in which he walked. Each week, when the bread and juice come by, each of us is forced to make a statement. Either you say, I'm not a Christian, or you say, I am. This is for me. It's wise and right to evaluate if your claim to be right with God is true. John starts our self-evaluation by pointing us to God himself. Look down at 1.5. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. And if we say we have fellowship with him, yet we walk in darkness, we lie. Similarly in 2.4, if I do not keep his commandment, yet say I know him, I'm a liar. 
Christians walk in the light, 1-7. Christians obey Jesus' commands, 2-3. Christians walk in the same way Jesus walked, 2-6. Obedience isn't optional. Holiness isn't optional for the Christian. They are what the Christian does. Obedience and holy living are defining characteristics of the one saved by grace because of the one to whom we are saved. There is nothing meritorious or saving about that obedience, about those works. You must know this, you are not saved because you obey, but our obedience is how we know that we have come to know him, two, three, and five. If your life is not marked by godly obedience, there is a good chance you have been lying about your status before God. But great news, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us and cleanse us from that sin that would otherwise separate us from him. Those who are truly right before God are defined by confessing their sins and obeying. So confess, repent, and resolve by faith to walk in the light as he is in the light and keep his commandments. And then take the Lord's Supper in grateful, worthy remembrance of the one who paid for those sins by his blood. But if you think that you're good enough, that you have no sin that separates you from God, you're lying to yourself. There is no more devastating self-deception than to think that you're right with God, only to find out after you die that you're still in your sins. To only recognize for the first time, to only heed these warnings, that you have been self-deceived when before the judgment seat of the Lord you hear, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. What foolishness it is to lie to ourselves, one another, or to God, pretending you're okay while you're actually guilty before the perfect all-knowing judge of all the earth especially while he offers you forgiveness and the cleansing of guilt with the blood of his own son. If you say you have not sinned, if you trust in your own obedience to save you, if you put your confidence for rightness before God in anything other than the cleansing and forgiveness by Jesus' blood, God declares here that you are self-deceived. Non-Christians say they have not sinned. Christians confess their sin. So Christian declares you take this bread and juice together as a church. I am a sinner. We are sinners. Our sins there are many. His mercy is more. Thoroughly and freely confess your sins to the Lord and to those against whom you have sinned. Look down at 1-9 and marvel and worship. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us and cleanse us from all our sin. Do not fall into the trap of smuggling merit into this time, smuggling your own works into the Lord's Supper. If justification could come by your own works, then you're declaring Christ died for no purpose. Don't say, oh, I had a good week, I can take the bread and juice this time, or I had a bad week, I better pass. That's not what this time is about. If you sin, where you see sin, confess it, obey, and enjoy the forgiveness that Christ provides. But don't be content to say, oh, Christ died, I'm okay to stay in this sin. Our standing is righteous before God only comes through the death of the righteous one, whom we remember with this bread and juice. Jesus Christ, the righteous, the propitiation, the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Our works do not earn our forgiveness. They only testify to what God has done when he saves us. So if you've checked out, listen up. This is the so what of everything we've been talking about. How do you know if this forgiveness is yours? 
that you would be right to take the bread and juice, but even more so to be confident in your salvation. Well, one, if, if you believe in Jesus, 323, trusting in him alone, con two, confessing your sins, and three, walking obediently in the light as he's in the light. That's how you would know. But how do you know if you should let the bread and juice pass, acknowledging that you're not saved and taking this as an opportunity to repent and believe? Well, one, you should let it pass if you have confidence in your own goodness. Or two, if you refuse to confess your own sins or to confess all your sins. Or three, if you walk in darkness, not obeying and not loving. If you need help understanding this, if this makes you concerned, if you want to know how to be saved, find me at the end of the service today or go over to these doors on your left. There will be somebody there to pray with you, to speak with you. Men, come and serve us and take the bread and juice, if appropriate, on your own.